All right, good day, comrade subscribers. Um, I see you're starting to get getting back into my photography. So I've got got a few different cameras. Um, my first DSLR is the D50, which actually um, I got from my late father-in-law. So the D50 is kind of well, it's a special camera, well, because it's my late father-in-law's. Um, I remember going in London to Selfridges, I think. To, to buy it when you went and bought it. But the D50 was also Nikon's first consumer level digital SLR. So it's kind of special in that respect. It's um, it's outdated now. It's been, I think, was it 2000 and... When was it? Early 2000s. So it's, um, it's a bit outdated now. Six megapixels. Uh, it's, um, well, DX uh, format. Uh, sensor or, or otherwise known as APS um, which is always fun. this is actually an APS camera my wife's APS camera which was pretty cool back in the day so APS is a well, advanced photo system um, film camera but the beauty of the so this is an Ixus 2 the beauty of the um, of the IPS was, um, was was a couple of a couple of things it's um, you could mid-roll, you could change the roll, mid-roll, I think. Um, you can get timestamps, but the timestamps were on the back of the photo, not as part of the photo. If you remember the photos, you got the timestamp, which is which is okay, I think, if you're taking photos of family and stuff. Um, but probably, especially these days, you know, 40, 30, 30 years later, you look at, look at photos and you say, oh, I wish I knew when that was taken. Well, I do. <laughs> I'm a bit uh, OCD about that. But anyway, so, um, and you could also, in this case, you could also have little, put little titles on the back. But the other thing about the APS-C is that you could have different, um, you could frame the photo a different way. So we've got what's APS-C, which is basically what the, um, what the DX, sensor was that well that kind of size so that's the classic um i'm not sure about the h and then you've got p which is panoramic so if you took a photo with the panoramic and, and can you actually um i don't know if you can actually uh, be able to do this probably not <laughs> so that's that's panoramic no that's h so where, where, did, where did it go there we go so there's h and then if we switch to panoramic the um, you get a wider wider field of view, and then if you go back to C, then you've got a kind of a classic classic view. Um, and so I do actually have sample photos, but this wasn't about APS-C. Um, that was just basically an example of what APS-C, <laughs> where the APS-C came from, terminology. Anyway. So you're probably wondering, so what? It's Nikon's first consumer uh, DSLR. It was your late late father-in-law. So what? Well, I had this. The thing is, I had this. It's a basically it's a D50 IR, you could say. So it's an infrared um, infrared full time. So you could do um, you can do infrared on normal cameras. Um, by obviously just sticking an infrared filter on the front. The problem is that also that cuts down on the bulk of the well, of the visible light as well. So you can't just have an infrared and f filter on the front and go snap, 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 snap. You've got to basically have it on a tripod and take a timed exposure um, because it just cuts out all of that light. So... <laughs> Yeah, so I basically had this converted to, to full-time infrared. So what that means is, um, you can see here, they've, they've put their, I think it was Life Pixel. So it's probably about 10, 10 or so years ago now. It's, it's, it's been a while. Uh, you basically send it off to them. They will, I think this is, yeah, I think this is the lens that came with it. So you basically just send, you, obviously you take out the battery, take out the battery, take off the lens, and you send send them the body, and they will convert it to infrared, which involves um, taking off. I think you take off a filter, which blocks infrared, for start. Um, 
and I think they must put an infrared filter. Some I can't remember. The, look it up. It'll be online. It's not a thing about infrared. I just wanted to show it. Um, but when when you do change things to infrared, you've also the the focus is slightly off. So at the moment for visible light, the focus. Well, you can actually see. Where is they normally have a? Oh, here we go. So that that symbol there shows where basically where the um where the sensor is so that's basically where the, where the focal is focal point is but with i think or something like that but anyway that's that's basically where the sensor is in in that line there infrared it's slightly off so they ha you have to do some internal adjustments to bring that back in alignment and it differs based on the lens so um i think so this is the standard pack-in lens for the d50 so i didn't have to send this to them they will calibrate it based on this lens um if I wanted it for some other lens, then I would have to send them the lens. I think I, maybe it's changed these days. I don't know. Maybe they, you just tell them what lens, and they they can. They've got one there. Um, yeah. So basically, you know, it all works like a normal normal camera. Obviously, this is just a, you know, it's not a digital viewfinder. It's just a basically because it's a SLR. It's just showing you what's coming through at the moment. So use like normal. And then you take a phone, of course, that's going to be <laughs> totally dark because there is um, <laughs> there's no infrared in here. But this is an example infrared. Oh, someone's trying to call me. I don't know who that is. So this is an infra um, example infrared. Um, what am I doing here? Yeah. So basically, with infrared, um, green, chlorophyll, etc., et turns up white. Um, and then when you put it on, um, when you post-process it on the computer, um, so there's a tree. So that was just taken as a normal photo. If I wanted to do this on a normal camera, I'd have to put an infrared lens on and then put on a tripod. And then, um, well, you're not going to get sharp clouds. You're going to get the clouds of, uh, you know, have a movement. So... Yeah, so that was basically, <laughs> I must say I haven't scripted anything. I just wanted to show you my infrared camera, uh, full-time infrared. Um, so I've got a D600 as well, which has got, the, uh, still suffering from the well-known bloody flicking oil onto the sensor issue. But, um, you know, if you've got an old D, uh, old DSLR, um, that's still working perfectly fine. This D50 is still working perfectly fine. You know, it's got limitations like, you know, it can only handle, it can only take up to two gigabyte card. Um, you know, they never did that sort of firmware upgrade. Um, but at six megapixel, t still takes perfectly good photos. Um, so if you wanted to do infrared, then, you know, and you've got an old camera sitting around, then, you know, it costs a few hundred dollars, but, you know, it's well worth it. Um, yeah, there are tutorials online about how to po post process like for example i think you swap you swap the the blue and the red channels or something you do things like that so um yeah maybe at the end if i'll, I'll dig out some of my infrared photos and I'll, I'll stick them on the end maybe but yeah that was basically it just a quick video about my uh, nikon d50 ir okay that's all um Back to work on the floppy drive, I think. Bye for now.